Okay, what is going on, flight sim enthusiasts? It's the Portuguese Flying Stew coming at you with a tutorial video today on how to install the flight instrument panel by Logitech Gaming. Now, I've been doing a lot of research uh, when I first got these devices, and there seems to be a lack of uh, support when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So a lot of the information that you see on their website for the drivers and softwares, uh, there's actually a step that's missing, and I wanted to cover that today in a short video on how to uh, completely install it on Windows 10 Home Edition. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the USB port that you're going to be plugging this into. Now, from other videos that I've seen and other research that I've been doing, the Logitech device connects into a 2.0. It doesn't need to be 3.0. Um, if you have a hub or if you want to plug it directly into your computer, that's also fine. However, uh, there's a lot of panels that are available, so there's 15 different styles. So if you do end up with a hub, you want to make sure that you have 2.0 and it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be 3.0 and that you have a power adapter and that that power adapter is four amps or greater, uh, only because once you start plugging in all these devices, for example, I have a hub that has about 20 different ports in it. And I noticed, actually it has more than 20 ports, but when I noticed I plugged in 21 different devices and the hub actually doesn't support all of my devices. So I'm gonna either have to split it into multiple hubs or I'm gonna have to find a device that can actually support all my devices that are plugged in. So very important. Uh, key to make sure that you have uh, the support when it comes to the hub or make sure that you have the USB, the correct USB device uh, connected. So 2.0 is uh, the way to go. So now that we have that squared away, uh, we'll get right into it. So Logitech, when you navigate over to the Logitech website, the links will be in the description below. It's going to bring you to the uh, download page. Uh, for the driver and the software. Uh, so first thing you want to do is really just download the ins the setup guide and that will tell you the information that I'm telling you today. It's going to be this thing here. Uh, it's going to talk about Flight Sim X and it will not mention Microsoft Flight 2020, just FYI. So even though it says it, it still does support Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. It's something that they recently just uh, released in December of 2020. So just keep that in mind when you're reading the instructions. All right, so once you make your way over to the Get Started page, you'll download that, you'll start, you'll pull it up a separate window, then you're gonna go to the Downloads section. And here you're gonna download the software that's actually gonna communicate between the panel and Microsoft Flight 2020. So software version is listed here, last update is in December, and it supports 10, 8, and 7. So you're gonna go ahead and download it. Another thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to download the drivers. It's also drivers and another set of software. Unfortunately, this here, uh, this software is supposed to be able to update your panel, but for some reason with my computer, uh, it wasn't able to download the drivers. So I had to actually do some searching around and find a driver that would actually work. So you are gonna use both. So both links that are in the description. So after you download this, uh, you're going to extract the files, bring it up. You can plug in your device. However, in the initial setup, when we set up the driver, you're going to want to have the device unplugged when we set up the, the uh, driver. If you want to test it out and see if this will do it for you, you can. However, if you're running Windows 10, I can tell you already that I ran into an issue where this software here did not pick up the actual panel. But you're still gonna need this to communicate. Once you get the drivers going, you're gonna still need this software to communicate the, all the panels to Microsoft Flight 2020. So you still download it anyway, but if you wanna give it a go, uh, fire it up, have the device unplugged, then plug in your device, and then run the software, see if it identifies it or recognizes it or allows you to update it. I don't think it's going to because then I wouldn't be making this video. But if it does, great. If it doesn't, then I'm going to navigate over to another website. And that's going to be on softpedia.com. Now, the link will be in the description again below. 
Make sure you have your compatible uh, device listed here. So I have Windows 10 64-bit. Go ahead and download that file as well. So once you download both files, you're going to come into your, your uh, document section. And you're going to look for both of them. You're going to extract the data. I already did. I created two different folders. One is going to be for the 2020 release, which is the newest one that helps communicate between the computer and Microsoft Flight. And then the other one is the actual driver from 2017. This one is the one that's going to be crucial because this is the one that's actually going to run successfully and actually pull up the driver and it loaded into your device. Now, in the beginning, you'll want to do device manager before you run any of the softwares and drivers. You want to go ahead and plug in your device, go to device manager on your computer. You're going to find your device listed. It's either going to be in the human interface devices or it's going to be listed in your uh, USB hub or there will be one more that will be up here. It will normally say either other devices or ports. Sometimes they pop up here as well. Once you find it, you're going to right click on the, the, the actual device. You're going to go to properties and then you're going to go search through the events and you're going to look for vid underscore zero six. And then there's another part to that. However, I don't have it currently in front of me, but I know it's going to say for the beginning, it's going to say vid underscore zero six. I just don't know if it's alpha or delta. I, I believe it's alpha. So, so you want to make sure that that's the correct device you're going to be installing uh, for this panel. Once you know that your computer is recognizing the device and it actually sees it, it might not run 100%. It might power on and then turn off. It might not power on at all. So what you'll want to do is just make sure that your computer is actually showing it in here in your device sections before we load the drivers. Unplug the device from the computer, and then you're going to go ahead and run your setup for the 2017 driver, which is the second application you wanted to download. You're going to hit Accept. You're going to hit Next. And then you're going to see a screen like this that pops up. At this time, you want to make sure that your device and all devices that have to do with, or if you have more than one instrument panel, you want to make sure it's not connected to the computer. You're going to hit Next. It's going to run through, and then it's going to ask you to connect your device to the PC. Um, mine are actually already all configured, so I don't have an example to show you. But once you plug it in, you're going to hit the Next button. It's going to go through the loading process. It's going to load the driver, and then your Windows should automatically pick it up as it's loaded the driver into the uh, device manager. After that, your device should be good to go. It's going to pop up uh, a, um, an advertisement on the screen, and it will see different devices. You'll see the serial number and all that stuff. And then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and close it out. And now you can do one device at a time, which is recommended. And then once the device is configured and picked up, then all your other devices, all your other instrument panels, once you plug them in, the computer will automatically recognize it because it has the driver already loaded in for the first one that you did. Okay, And then you want to back out. You're going to go to the second one. The first, well, actually, the, sec the first one that you downloaded, but now this is the second step. So you're going to hit Setup. You're going to run through the configuration. And then you should have a screen on your desktop or an icon on your desktop that says Logitech, Microsoft, and it should be a G. And then you're going to make sure that loads successfully. Once you're ready to plug in all your devices and you do that, you have them all recognized and they're all powered on, you want to go ahead and double click the Logitech. You want to hit yes on the command. And then now your computer will be synchronized with the panels and the panels to Microsoft Flight 2020. So once you're done with that, you can go ahead and fire up the SIM. The devices should all load. Once you get the SIM loaded, then all the gauges will pop up, and then you can go ahead and configure each panel to whatever instrument that you're looking for. Thanks for sticking with us here. I hope this video was uh, informative, and I hope it helped you out. I just went ahead and saved you the three-hour uh, legwork, and uh, in this short video, you'll be able to take care of all that. And uh, if you can go ahead and smash that like button, I'd truly appreciate it, and consider giving me a, a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, my social links will be located in the description. 
uh, be sure to give me also a like and follow on my social medias, and I would truly, truly appreciate it. Once again, thanks for st uh, sticking in, tuning in, and watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.